Hello everyone. Welcome to the third edition of Guru Mantra podcast. And here is your Guru Charan Kumar. Today we have a student guest speaker, Mauli Sood, who scored 37 points in the final IB exam. Mauli was a Pathways World School Gurugan Clicking Club head also for the year 2022-23. Mauli is an ambitious girl, someone who has a strong desire to achieve success by meeting her goals in the DP. And she is a compassionate student who can both feel and express the sympathy for others. I can say with clear words that she can handle any situation with maturity. Mauli, welcome to the Guru Mantra podcast and please introduce yourself with our audience. Hi everyone, my name is Molly Sood and I was a student at Pathways World School Aravli. I scored 37 points in IB and for ESS I got a 7. Uh, I will be attending University of British Columbia this year and that's in Canada. Besides that, I love dancing and I have a passion for making candles and other crafts and I'm happy to be here. Fantastic. Molly, we will start our first series of questions with ESS Paper 1. Can you tell what key skill did you develop or enhance while preparing for the paper one? And how did they contribute, that particular skill contribute your success in the paper one? For paper one, more, the most important aspect is understanding the resource booklet. And to enhance my understanding capability, I went through all the articles and resources my, my teacher shared. And it's very important that you have a strong understanding of the article and every line in it and inculcate those responses in your answers and that did help me a lot reading articles helped me a lot that's a brilliant yes molly always read a lot of articles now molly in paper one it is essential to analysis and interpret the data provided in the data booklet can you tell how did you effectively use the data booklet during the examination could you provide some example how would you announce your answer to get a seven? Before starting to read the question paper, I used to go through the data booklet so I know what point is mentioned where in the data booklet because not everything is given in an order. It's always going back and forth. So it's important that you read the data booklet first instead of hopping on to the questions and then trying to find the answer in the uh, resource booklet. And in the examinations, I incorporated the same practice. I went through the data booklet first and then the question paper. That really helps. Oh, that's a very brilliant one. Only I have given the past paper to our entire batch. You are the one of the few students who use the past paper booklet in ESS effectively. Now, can you tell what are the benefits of using the past paper to study the IB ESS paper one? And how can students make the most use this past paper as a best resource? If you're just going through the past paper on your own and not getting it corrected from your teacher, there's not, not really a lot of use you're putting into it. It's very important that you understand where are you lagging and you make the best use of the feedback given to you. You should also be conscious that whenever something goes wrong in the past paper, you make sure that you study that very concept before appearing for the final, exa final examinations and once you go through the past paper booklet for paper one especially you will know that there's a trend of on, uh, answering the questions and there's a trend that IB follows while asking the questions as well so if you're familiar with the trend you'll be able to finish your paper in like 50 minutes and brilliant. have that revision buff yourself brilliant so writing precise and accurate terms in is essential for scoring I marks in the paper one I still remember you sit in the class, you write each and every notes in the classroom. Can you tell what advice can you offer your students on how to craft that perfect term that demonstrates a strong understanding of the ESS paper one marks? When you're going through your notes, just be conscious enough and sit with a highlighter and you can highlight every key term that is important while you read. And when you're reading your data booklet, Incorporate the same practice there. Now, I know we can't use highlighters during the examination, but using a soft pencil is always advisable. While you underline, you always 
click with certain terms that you had read before and you can connect it to the information given in the booklet and that helps you just come to the point and give your answer in a concise manner while saving time and giving most important points first okay only now we are moving to some of the question related to the paper 2 which is a very difficult part for the most of the ess student can you tell what factor should be considered when selecting a essay question in paper 2 especially nine mark question how a student can ensure well round coverage of the syllabus for paper 2 to writing and perfect nine mark question how you did it for nine mark the most important thing is you are familiar with certain case studies now it gets a little extensive if you consider case studies for every unit so it's beneficial that if you go through the articles provided on the internet or if your teacher shares with them so that you have a connection between the nine marker question being asked and you have a case study in hand for it already and for nine marker i what what i used to do was consider um, for nine marker what i did personally was start off with a framework make a rough note of how i how was i going to frame my response make short bullet points and then elaborate on them so it makes your answer a little more wholesome and you can add terminology right next to your rough work so that you're not missing out on any term while you're thinking and writing in a flow brilliant now namauli can you tell what role did your classroom notes play in your setting for the ess paper 2 how did you organize and utilize your notes effectively which is related to the paper 1 it is very important that you take note of everything that's been taught in class because there's so much things the book cannot make you understand unless someone orally has explained them to you and you've put it down in your own words it is very important now i had a lot of classmates who would just sit and go through the book and study from it and i realized that they weren't very well versed with the syllabus or the topic in particular if if they hadn't paid attention in class and written down their understanding in their own words so for paper 2 i would advise everyone that whatever is being taught in class instead of just copying down from the blackboard or going through your textbook and making your short notes you should rather take up a concept and try to write down what is your understanding of it and maybe later go through the book and just put down whatever points have been left out or ask your teacher for guidance i'm sure they'll be there to help you through every step but it's very important that you write your own understanding so it sticks with you that's a brilliant Listeners, please note you have to really learn lot of skill from the Molly. One of the important skill is classroom notes. I still remember how classroom notes. It's a fantastic notes. It's equal to an iPad notes. Even people doing an iPad, they cannot also bring that kind of fantastic, colorful notes. So now, Molly, I have seen lot of skill during the two years. Uh, in developing in the ESS uh, paper two, uh, writing the answer, giving to my feedback, each and every notes. So I can list out you all the skill. How that skill help you to achieve the seven in ESS. Now, can you tell what skill did you find the most important develop in order to excel in paper two? Personally, for me, the skill I had to work on the most to excel in paper two was. time management after i did that it was most important that i went through the terminology because for nine markers and all the essay question there is it's they're so broad they're more like tok questions so it's very important that you stick to what's being asked and do not cook up stories around the topic so it's very important that you have a breakdown of the terminology so having a concept and having what terminology would i need to answer that particular concept that is what i that is something that i inculcated in my notes and that helped me a lot in paper 2 because i was very concise to the point and had the answers sim, fim, and had the answers similar to that were mentioned in the marking scheme yes i have seen this one in two years with you mauli so you said time management so i know time management is crucial for ibdp so can you tell what advice you give for your uh, dp 1 2 students effectively managing their time especially paper 2 because most of the students always struggle for the paper 2 two hours there are some students will take 1 hour 45 minutes to write essay question so what advice would you give for the dp students to use their manage their time during the paper 2 during the first five reading minutes it's very important that you go through the essay questions and mark the ones which you are well versed with and the ones you are going to answer so that you do not waste time later on while writing the examination on choosing which one do you want to respond to 
what i did was i used to start with the four markers first get done with those in 20 minute stops how much ever you written that's fine you can always come back to it later but missing out on the other questions with the data questions it is it's it's not worth it so you first finish your four markers the short answers and then you move on to the other questions and you can always come back to them later besides that after you're done with your nine marker the first one it's important that you stop yourself in 20 minutes in 20 minutes how much ever you've written that's fine move on to the next nine marker because you can not get more than nine marks in one question but losing out those nine marks in the other question that's not very that's not a very smart thing to do so even if you score a five and a six in the other question that's perfectly fine that gives you a lot more grades so just time yourself and you need to stop after a particular time even if you're not done with it and move on to the next part and come back to that particular question if you have time at the end wow brilliant now mauli we are going to question related to the ia i know uh, you are one of the best i i have collected in my career listener please note i have to say this particular thing i have been teaching 18 years but there are only few students have submitted ia above my knowledge i still remember after mauli submitted the first draft it took me at least one month to understand what is a topic i gave to my parallel teacher one of the other teachers outside india and they all done it fantastic ia so your IA journey is very important, I feel, Molly. Now, can you tell how Gulsa's feedback and the ESS Guru Mantra website help you achieve ESS IA 7? Gurusa's feedback was always very extensive and whatever factor I was missing, sir would get it on point. I remember going to him and being like, sir, there is something missing, but I don't know what. And he would just go through it and he would know what exactly needs to be there. Where needs, Where does it need to be there? And for ESS Guru Mantra website, it was very helpful for having reference to because there's not a lot of well-marked essays out there on the internet. And the website has everything in one place. So you do not have to waste time surfing through the internet, finding some resource that's helpful or makes sense to you. So everything there was marked. The IAs were marked according to the bands and whatever was missing, the feedback was right next to it. So I knew that this is something I do not have to forget in my IA and incorporate intentionally. The, the website overall just had a rubrics which made it easier for me to formulate my IA in a more cohesive way. Brilliant. Thank you, Molly. Now, could you discuss the most challenging part of USS IA and how did you overcome it? I know you must have faced a lot of challenges because your research question is unique, your topic is unique. So what is the most challenging part of your IA and how did you overcome it? There wasn't something very like challenging, challenging because there were always a lot of resources and help that was offered to me. But if there was something, it was probably how did I incorporate my terminology and the ESS concepts into my IA because I started to bend a little towards biology and physics towards the end. So staying on track with the terminology and connecting it to my research question again and again was a challenging part for me because I kept going beyond the word count. So it's it that was one challenge. And to overcome it, I uh, to overcome it, I started to sit with my textbook and highlight the terms which made sense in context to my IA and then incorporate them in places where they would have a more meaningful outcome. So Mauli, could you share the importance of the teacher's feedback during the IA process and how it has improved? I'm not talking only ESA, generally. Generally, in the IA process, how the teacher's feedback is really important to improve your work? The teacher has been reading so many IAs throughout their career that a single glance at our work can tell them what is missing and how much is this work going to score. So if you're not taking your teacher's feedback seriously and considering like a criticism, it would not help you because at the end of the day, your teacher is the one going to be marking it. And if they're telling you something that it's missing or it needs to be improved, that is something you should take very constructively and not take it to your heart that the teacher doesn't like me. So it's very important that you go to your teacher time and again and take their feedback because they won't turn you away. They'll only help you. And it really improves your work from maybe a four or a five to a straight seven. Oh, that's an important tips for each and every one. Um, Amoli, I know you have used you have used uh, primary data on your IA. So when using the primary research for the IA, what are some strategies 
to ensure the validity and the reliability of a collecting the data because many students they struggle to ensure the validity and the reliability of data collected can you share your experience before going out in the field and starting to conduct your primary research it is important that you go through the steps that you're going to follow with your teacher or your supervisor so if there's anything that you need to be cautious about they can inform you about it well before time and before you go out in the field it's important that you are aware that you're not supposed to harm the surroundings you are in compliance with the ib regulations besides that it's very important that you if you're cons- doing an experiment you at least repeat the process three times so that there's no room for error and you have an average of the readings and your data gets a little more reliable and it's important that you also refer to some other studies so that you know what are the factors the control variables uncontrollable variables that would affect your ia and how can you manipulate them effectively for your research to be more understandable by everyone around you brilliant so mauli now can you walk us through your planning process from the initial stage to the final draft of your essi before you start to frame your final research question it is important that you have an outline of what you're going to put in there and you start to read around it it's not important the first question that comes up to your mind is going to be the final one so before you start framing your research question it's important that you know what is happening in your surroundings what's the environment going around like what are the new challenges coming up and possibly find a solution to that or maybe a solution uh, uh, maybe come up with a problem that has not been addressed and you start a conversation after that process it's important you sit down with your teacher make a outline of how are you going to proceed with your ia have resources to read through consult different people and if it's a primary research you should be cautious of how are you going to manipulate the environment and how are you going to perform your experiment so that it's in a safe zone if you're considering a secondary research you should be cautious that all your resources and websites are credible enough you're not taking something off the internet that's not been authenticized for the final stages i would suggest everyone that you take out a print out of your ia have it in hard copy and besides that you should also have a print out of your subject guide the rubrics which confirms us about the ia's uh, marking bands so after you're reading your ia you can basically just put a tick mark next to every concept that you've covered so that it gives you a wholesome picture of the whole thing and you're 100% sure you've not missed out on anything that would lose you grades and when you're doing that you could also sit beside your teacher and have their feedback uh, an extensive written feedback so that you're on the same page as your teacher you do not leave any possibility of you losing out any mark because of a silly mistake this is a top class advice for all the ss students Mauli I have a last two question a general question listeners please note uh, Mauli when she graduated she got a best ess student award for the four semester Mauli Sood was continuously getting each semester in ess 7777 and i had a 44 students in her batch out of 44 she was a only student who was constantly getting the seven that shows a dedication that shows a hard work and that is a that is a reason i'm asking this question mauli can you tell what is the one factor that makes studying ess is unique and interesting when compared to the other dp subjects for me ess is a subject that is not confined within four walls there is so much to explore there is so much beyond the textbook there is so much beyond what's being taught in the classroom and that what it made that's what it made interesting for me I wanted to go back to my dorm I was a boarder so I wanted to go back to my dorm and study and see videos more about the topic that was being taught in class because there was just so much to learn from it it's an open ended subject there is so much room for improvement there is just so much information out there that you just want to grasp and for me personally i love the topic of climate change and global warming and i want to be one of the people who give a lot to the world so that it becomes a better place for all of us and ess gave me that opportunity for my mm. ia also i had a similar issue and in my university too i will be studying climate change for quite a bit so that is something ess fosters in you it fosters it fosters a new human being in you the one who cares about the environment i'm damn sure definitely you will give lot of to the uh, environmental world only my last thing is listeners please note molly sued as own startup 
she has her own startup and she is doing it brilliantly in that own startup so mauli suit can you tell to listeners about your own startup what you are doing and because i have a listeners from all over the world if they want to contact you how they can contact you? thank you so much i started my own small candle making business last year when i was in dp1 i make handmade candles they are all scented and paraben free paraben is a very toxic gas which when inhaled by humans can deteriorate your health in the long run so all my candles are paraben free besides that i also make customized stickers and it would be really great if all of you could just drop in on my website and check out the products and possibly buy a few you can reach out to me at www.kiwiee.shop brilliant listeners all this one it, it will be in the description you can log in to the description and you can get all the information mauli it's a brilliant conversation with you about your success all your experience will be a lesson for many dp students and especially ess students who want to achieve the high grades like you mauli your final words before we end ib is a journey in its whole and it's important you take the full out of it you make friends you make mistake overcome the challenges try something new just don't be a bookworm and don't keep your head down always aim for the high and you'll be good to go thank you for listening to the guru mantra podcast with your host gurucharan kumar i hope you enjoy our deep dive into the, all the tips and tricks about the ess if you enjoyed this episode then like the podcast please share with others and post it on the social media or leave the rate and the review thank you listeners and thank you mauli